Happy Looming, everybody. It's Michelle with you today. And this video is going to show you how to do the Wisteria web design um, that I created. And although it does look complicated, it's very easy. So um, before we get started, make sure that you have all of your tools ready to go. You're going to need um, anything with at least 20 pegs. So for this particular one, um, I have one on here ready to go. I use the KB Chunky Loom and the uh, 24 peg 5 8 gauge. Um, I have one that I'm working on right now for you guys. But you can use the Nifty Knitter or just the standard um, 24 peg loom. You don't need anything that's small gauge for this. You want that loose, airy look. So this one is fine. And I know a lot of people have this one, which is a standard one. So this one's great. You need your handy dandy tool. You need a darning needle, scissors, and my adorable little tape measure. All right. So what I'm going to do, let me move all this stuff out of the way and bring in this lovely lovely scarf so this one um i'm already done it was um already sold to a customer but she was nice enough to let me hold on to it at least do the video so as you can see it comes up with this gorgeous um when i first started doing it it looks like you know almost like a web to me because it's so delicate it's very light and lacy looking um, this particular yarn that I used for this is wool yarn. Um, I happen to get it from my landlady's knit shop. And let me get that so you can see it clearly. It's called Wisdom Yarns Poems. It is 100% wool. It's kind of hard to see because of that um, silver background. But um, I used two skeins of this. And they're only 109 yards each. And it says that it's a um, a four, but it's more like a three and a half to four. So what I would recommend for this is I know that a lot of people tend to, especially people that are new to looming, you tend to get excited and you go out and you buy like the Red Heart um, Super Saver or any of those because they're inexpensive. And then you realize like, man, I have to get two of these. Because I have to use two strands on the gauge for this loom normally. But no longer. Um, that was another one of the reasons why I created this is because I know a lot of people ask me in um, my group, you know, I only have X amount of dollars. I'm on a limited budget. There's not a whole lot you could do with the bigger looms and the thinner yarns. So that's why I did this. You can use thinner yarns um, to make this and again you can see how light and airy and this actually works out well for people in warmer states like texas and florida um, things like that because it does come out really nice and lacy so i'm going to put this one aside i'm going to bring this one over that i'm actually in the process of working on right now this one i absolutely love um, right after i sold the first one um, another customer who had wanted that Put in a custom order so this is the yarn that she had told me that she would want it for this particular one and this yarn is actually again um, it is a hundred percent virgin wool it's actually from germany it's made in germany um, i happen to get this from my landlady's knit shop and it's the same as the other it's a little thinner than a four it's more like a three and a half to a four um and uh, this one actually only has, I think about the same, hold on one second, let me get my eyes to work, um, as far as the amount here. So it's a 50 gram ball. It doesn't actually say, am I missing this? It doesn't say how long it is. But this is actually, um, I finished one skein, this is the second. It's kind of already caked. It's falling apart a little bit, but that's okay. Um, so that's what I'm using for that. But you can use acrylic you can use super saver you can use um if you have really nice um i had seen in the group this weekend somebody had posted some really nice italian yarn they had that was thinner that would work very well with this so to get started i'm going to give you a little cheat on this 
um, what I do to make it easier for me because it does um, tend to require a little bit of concentration in the beginning for this one. So what I did is you need 20 pegs all the way around. Um, the peg before the first one and the peg after the last one. So if we count these, it's gonna be 20 all the way around. So your first and your last peg, so peg one and peg 20, those are gonna be what I refer to in the written pattern as your edges. So you really um, work those in. And the reason why, as you can see here, you get this really nice, tight, clean edge. It's not that bulky um, edge you know, that you see on some scarves like that, that drives me crazy. Um, but with this, what, I, what I'm gonna show you here, it gives you that nice, tight, clean edge on both sides, okay? So as you can see here, nice, tight, clean edge. All right, so what I'm gonna tell you to do, and trust me, this will make life so much easier for you because once I did this, um, it made things a lot easier for me. Um, again, you have your first peg, so on your second peg, I use tape um, instead of uh, stitch markers because I have a tendency to, to go so fast that I'll always catch my stitch markers <laughs> and it messes me up. So mark your second peg. These are pegs that you will always purl. The rest of them, it is a little different as we go and you'll understand that. So you wanna set it up by marking your second peg so that you know that that's a purl. Again, I have tape here. So peg two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Peg eight, you're gonna mark again. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Peg 14. So two, eight, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and then there's your 20, which is your last. So you're only gonna mark those three. So two, eight, and 16. These are good guides to let you know you're always gonna purl those. So it makes it easier for you not to have to pay so much attention once you get in the habit of it. Like I said, it does look like it's pretty intricate and difficult to do. It isn't, it's pretty simple to be honest, um, to go through this. So once you have those marked, um, another uh, thing that I always like to remind myself of with this pattern, and once we get started, you'll understand. With this pattern, you'll have some um, in every row where one peg, some pegs are gonna be empty. And, and when I say row one, when we move forward, I mean going in the direction that you start. Row two is your direction coming back. But in row one, you're always gonna have a couple of pegs which are empty. So in this case, we have um, peg six, peg 12, and peg 18, and that's going forward with row one. And then on your way back, you'll see those will be covered. And when I say covered, you're just gonna yarn across the front. So like this particular one right here, um, you can see it's not wrapped or anything. So that's important to keep in mind. It's just a yarn in front. And I'll show you how we do that, all right? So to get started on this, actually, What I'm gonna do is um, use the blue nifty knitter that I have here just to show you guys how to get it started. And then after we get casted on and we move over to um, the actual pattern, you'll see how simple it is. So I'm gonna use some leftover Barcelona that I have. You're gonna start simply by making a slip knot. However you make them, it's totally up to you. Um, you're gonna cast on to your first one. So I did not mark these, hang on one second, let me mark them. Okay, so I have my two, um, my two pegs that are before my first and my last. Now I'm gonna count over to my eighth one. Remember, I'm not doing anything with these two, that just reminds me where my stop points are on both ends. So this is gonna be my first, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight because I know that's gonna be a pearl. And again, um, I just happen to have some bands close by. All right, there's eight. And the next one we're gonna do is 14. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14.
And if you have stitch markers and you're okay using those, or um, some people like me use tape normally, however you want to use it, that's completely up to you. Oh, and then peg two. Almost forgot about number two. Okay. One, three, just enough to get it on there. Okay. So, um, Again, these two in the very beginning, here's your anchor peg. I always try to use, anytime I have an anchor peg, I have um, that as my stop point. Now on the chunky, there is no anchor peg, but um, I keep them marked in a way that I know which one is my starting peg. So these two, you're not gonna use those. That's just to tell you that this is your starting peg, this is your ending peg. So peg two, eight, and 14, you should have marked and keep a, a notepad or however you want to do it, that those are pearl, all right? So what you're going to do, um, what I prefer to do with these is the no hook crochet cast on. And the reason why is you're going to make this into an infinity scarf and it makes it so much easier to put it back on there. And then when you do the bind off, it's super easy. So the no crochet cast on, I will have a link on um, here also to show you how I learned how to do that, which is from Tootalit. And it's super easy. You don't need a crochet hook or anything like that. Although some people like to use it, it's completely up to you, um, however you wanna use it. So for me, I just grab, here's my slip knot hole right here. And I put my thumb and my forefinger through there and you kind of stretch it out. Then you go to your first peg, okay, your starting peg, which should be between the first two rubber bands. That's your peg one, that's your edge peg. Okay, so that's gonna make your clean edge. So what you're gonna do is thumb, forefinger, slip knot here, you have your working yarn here. You're gonna put it through and then pinch and then make a new a new slip knot. And then just pull that tight. And it's okay, sometimes people will tend to get freaked out because this will get a little loose um, as you're going to the next one. So what I've learned to do is you tighten that up and then you just put your other forefinger here as you wrap this one over and around and then come through and grab it and make that new slip knot and then you just make it smaller and you continue that all the way around. Okay, so go ahead and cast on and then meet me when you're at the very end of your cast on. All right, so as you can see, I have um, cast it on all the way around and on the very last one, it is still empty. So with this, what I like to do is just take this last slip knot hole pop it right over that and then pull it tight okay so now your setup should look just like this where these four were the first two rubber bands at the end and the beginning and then the two in the middle right where the anchor peg is if you happen to be using this one are empty the rest are all casted on as you can see all the way around okay so here is where we start um, with edging and why it's so important to do it like this because it allows you to give that clean uh, looking edge. What I like to do, even though that's cast on and your working yarn looks like it's already going this direction, I like to bring it around the back and purl it. And bring it up, take that one off, put this one on. Okay, and then you're going to purl all the way back to the beginning to your starter peg, which is peg one. Now, for me, um, I happen to work going um, both directions with no problem and it makes it easier for me. Whatever you can do this, whatever direction you want and uh, whatever's more comfortable for you, that's totally up to you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is purl all the way back to my starting peg, all right? Purling is really easy. It's not complicated what you're doing. Um, I'm sure many of you are already versed on that. Um, you're just taking your hook, you're going down from the top, your working yarn is underneath of it, you're going to grab it, scoop it, loop it, and drop it. And you're just going to do that all the way back to the beginning. And then once you're back at the beginning, let's pick up there and we'll continue. Okay, so I've basically purled all the way back to the beginning. I haven't purled off the last one yet, and this again is where the importance of doing this what I'm about to show you gives it that nice clean edge so with me I know I'm always purling back to my starter peg and I'm knitting in this direction so 
once I'm at that first one, I purl it. Normally, a lot of people just do a turn and wrap. I don't like doing that. You purl it off, so that way your, your first peg is purled off. Now, you're starting row one, and you're going in that direction, so you're gonna knit that same one you just purled, so you're just gonna come in the front, you're gonna knit that over, and there you go. So that's always your edge peg, and your last one is always your edge peg. Now we're gonna get started setting this up for the pattern. So if you remember correctly, all these ones that are marked 2, 8, and 14, you will always purl those two. So on row one, and again, I'll have these written on the screen so that way you guys can see, and also you can grab the written pattern as well, and that will show you um, what what row has what stitches because it's a little different on the way. So the very first one, again, that's just your edge. So right here, your peg two, which is your purl, obviously we're going to purl that one. So grab it from the bottom. And this is where it helps, especially if you um, are able to you know, purl in both directions because you're gonna need to. Now on the third peg, you're gonna knit, so you're gonna do a U-knit where you bring it right around the front and knit it off. There is no E-wrap with this. It is all U-knit or true knit, which is the same thing. So on this one, we U-knit that one. Then you're gonna lift off that new knit. You're gonna carry it over to peg four. You're gonna tighten it up a little bit. And then this also is where it's kind of important. We're gonna purl these two together so as you can see, there's two strands. We knitted this one and then we carried that knit over to four. Now we're gonna purl these two strands together, but when you purl these, based on the direction that you're going, you're always gonna bring your yarn to the front of that and grab it from there and purl it. And the reason why that part is so important, let me purl that off and then I'll show you, is because, let me put that aside, on this one where it's worked up, I'm trying to see like a color where you can see it the best. Okay, so as you can see here, you have like these nice little pearls on each side, depending on which way you go. Like right here on the edges, it kind of ties it off. So once you start working it more, you'll see what it, I'm talking about, okay? So let me kind of review that. This is your edge peg purl, U-knit, carry that U-knit over to peg four. You'd have two strands, which now I have one because you're gonna purl both of those off. Then you're gonna knit off this one, knit off. Okay, so on this one here, we carried over, we have purled two here. This one we U-knit. This one next to it is purl. Then this one here is knit. All right, so then we're starting the pattern all over again where these ones that we have marked where it's purl going in this way, it works in increments of um, six basically. So it's 18 plus two for the edges. You're gonna do the, the same exact thing. So this first one where there's a marker, you're always gonna purl. There we go. Then the next one we knit over, take it off, carry it over to the next one. Then you have two strands on here and you're gonna purl those two together. Remember, bring your working yarn between the empty one and the second one, where, or the one that has two strands on it. Purl those two together, lift them off, and then knit, purl, knit, and then again, we're gonna continue the sequence over. So I have a marker on this one which tells me I have to purl. So you're gonna purl, take that off, put the new loop on, you grab a little more working yarn. And then this one we unit over, take it off, bring it over to the one next to it. You'll have two strands. You're gonna purl those two together.
and then knit, purl, knit, and then this last one we knit, which is your edge, and then we come right to the front and we purl, which is the beginning of row two, what I reference to is row two. So row one is always your first direction, row two is just going back. Okay, so now with row two, it is a tiny bit different because once you come to the end of this, you should have a couple of empty pegs. So peg three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, peg nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and peg 15. Those should all be empty. So it's the peg right after the stitch or, or the marker one. Okay, on every one. So you see your marker, empty, marker, empty, marker, empty. That's for row one. Once you're done row one, make sure those are all empty. Now for row two, going back, again, remember when you come to the end, you're gonna knit it and then to start it, you just purl it. So that way it gives you that super clean edge on your work when it's done. Okay, Oops, let me grab my, my yarn. So working our way back, um, it's it's pretty simple and again this will all be laid out for you easy peasy for you guys to completely understand so on the way back remember this is your edge peg for this second one we're just going to knit knit again yarn over that one that you just knitted off okay so now you have two you're gonna purl those two together you're gonna knit now you come to your empty one all you do is just merely bring your yarn in front you don't wrap it you don't do anything but just bring it right across the front and remember we have a stitch marker here so that tells us that we purl and we've come to the end of that first six so you're gonna do the same thing so knit knit yarn over to the next peg get on there there we go you have two strands on that you're gonna bring the working arm between your empty and your two strands purl that off you're always gonna purl the one with two strands okay and then for um, this one knit bring that yarn across empty peg bring that working yarn straight across and then you have a stitch marker here so you know you have to purl like I said, it's really easy once you get started on the first couple of rows. So knit, knit, carry off, yarn over to the next peg, two strands, bring the yarn between your empty and your two strands, purl it, lift off, loop on, and then knit, empty, working yarn right in the front, you don't do anything else, just right in the front. And then I have a stitch marker, so I know I need to purl. And this last one is my, my edge peg. So we're going to always purl. So I know I'm done the end of that row. And then we're gonna start the next, right in front. Okay, that's it, it's just a two row pattern. So at the end of row two, um, you'll see here, this is the end. Here you have, if we're counting from this being the first one, so on the way back, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so three, nine, uh, and 15 should all be empty, okay? So going in row one, peg six, 12, and 18, and then in row two, coming back, three, nine, and 15 will always be empty. So you just continue to work that back and forth. Let me move this one out of the way and bring in the one that I'm actually working on now. And as you do that, now it might just curl a little bit like this. It almost looks tubular. Tubular, dude. Um, but that's okay. You can easily steam block this as I did with this one here. And it will come together looking just like this. Just fabulous. Um, 
So there you go, it is that simple. Just keep working that pattern back and forth, row one, row two, row one, row two, and it actually works up really quick. Um, I did one skein of this one that I'm working on uh, yesterday in just a couple of hours. Once you get the hang of it, it goes super quick. So even though it looks very intricate and impossible to figure out, um, it's really easy. It's just one of those things where I just decided I have all this really nice delicate yarn that I get from my landlady and um, I didn't know what to do with it. So like this is another color. It's the same yarn. It's just another color and um, I have a bunch of those. So there you go. Super easy with Stereo Web. Um, I'm really excited to see what everybody does with this and thank you, thank you, thank you all for making this so enjoyable for me to do. I have lots of ideas that I'm going to be coming up with and I promise I will do a tutorial for the hooded um, shawl which is um, inspired by Assassin's Creed. That's been another thing that a lot of people have been asking me about. So there you go. Happy looming everybody. All of the contact information to reach me will be in the information section of this. I will also have a written pattern as well on um, my Ravelry, which I will link back to you guys. So happy looming, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Thanks.